Hello, um, can you hear me? Okay, I'm Rod Omani and I'm going to take you through the SIM50 product. Hopefully, everybody can see at the moment a Sage CRM screen on the product summary. Um, <clears throat> this, is, um, this is a product I keyed in, uh, sorry, on the company summary page. This is a company I keyed in a, an hour or two ago for the purpose of this demonstration. It's, it's just a straightforward CRM company. Um, the, the only thing that's interesting about this particularly is that I've chosen to make it a customer. Um, that's because Sage 50 Accounts is only interested in customers and suppliers, whereas in here we could have prospects and all sorts of other types of uh, company. Okay. On this screen is our new Sage 50 tab that gives you connectivity to Sage 50 accounts. That tab is only visible for customers and suppliers. Um, so I'm going to open this tab up at the moment. Now, at, as things stand, there's not a there's not a lot happening here because, as this comment tells you, I've only just created this customer. So there's no connection to Sage 50 accounts at the moment. Over on the right hand side, because there's no connection, there's a promote button. And I'm going to click the promote button and this customer will be created in Sage 50 accounts as soon as I do. So I'll promote that one now. We can now see OKL001 that is the uh, reference number for Sage 50 accounts. Um, if I look in Sage 50 accounts and I, ref I need to refresh this, I can now find OKL001. And this is the company I've just created. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a credit limit in here. Um, I'm going to put a change the settlement date to say 31 days. Um, I'm going to put a value in for trading terms. And I've just checked the terms agreed box because it gives you an ir irritating pop up every time if you don't deal with it. Now, the reason that I've done that is to show you the real time connection to Sage 50 accounts. As you can see at the moment, we're showing no credit limit information. But if I re click on the tab to refresh it, we've picked up the credit limit real time, the trading terms and the settlement due days that I just that I just keyed in. And very importantly, the company status so that if this company was on credit hold, you would see the message on hold there. So that this makes that information available to the CRM user. Um, I'm back on the company summary. If we now needed to maintain this customer because it's already connected, the, the, we don't need to tell it to update it. If I, for example, put some information in the um, web address, which I hadn't put in initially, okay, and saved that, You'll see this message and there'll be a second message uh, that's saying that, that we needed to update the um, record in Sage 50 accounts. And it even confirms there that it updated OKL001. So if I go back to Sage 50 accounts and look in here, the web address I just created has now been uh, now found its way into Sage 50 accounts. So once the company is defined in both places and linked, a change will automatically be reflected in Sage 50 accounts. You don't need to do anything to make that happen. I'm going to show another company now that's been around there for a while. This is part of the Sage demo data, actually. And this, and this company is a little more interesting because it's got, it's got credits and invoices. Again, these credits, that Sage 50 accounts data, we're looking at real time in the CRM environment. And again, here are the invoices. There are three invoices 
against this customer in Sage 50 accounts. And if I open up in Um, we can see all the invoice lines, and again, I'm paging through the invoice lines real time from Sage 50 accounts. Um, okay, so in a nutshell, we can look at quite a lot of the data, or the CRM user can look at quite a lot of the data in Sage 50. I'm going to go back to the customer I just created. And I'm going to create an order for that customer. This is just an ordinary CRM order. Um, and I'm going to choose the Sage Line 50 price list because that, that has the products in which are present in both Sage 50 and in CRM. I'm going to talk later about how we we'll, how we keep the products in the two places synchronized. Um, so I'm going to um, I'm going to put okay. One of the features here. This is the normal billing address. But if we, when we create an order, this order is eventually going to be posted into Sage CRM. We can change the address to any of the available addresses as the billing address, and any of the available addresses can be made into the shipping address, and that information can be passed over to Sage 50 accounts. Um, I'm going to add some products to this order. So I'm choosing just one product that's known to both places, and we'll say have two of those. The other thing that we can do in Sage CRM is have write-in products. Um, so I'm now our interface can support that, and Sage 50 accounts works well with writing products. So let's say we had a software license or something that hadn't been defined anywhere as a product. And I'll give it a price. That, for those who know about Sage 50, that will be generated in Sage 50 as a type S1 record, as, as type S1 line, I should say. Sage 50 also has something called a message line, a type M, and we can create those here and transmit them up if you like. And a message line is simply a bit of information that appears, it looks like a line and it appears on the order and on the invoice, but it plays no active part in the order at all. So having created my order, I think I can then go to my CRM and we have put a new tab there on my CRM that we call SIM50. Now, here we can see all the orders and quotes waiting to be presented. I've chosen to look at the orders first. There are no quotes, but I could have chosen. If I had any quotes, I can check the quote button and see any quotes that I created. In this order screen, we could have a large number of orders. And for each order, we have two options. We can either process the order or we can choose to ignore the order. If we, if we process the order, that will promote it to Sage 50 accounts. The, the order will be copied in its entirety to Sage 50 accounts and presented, and, and an order will be created there. If we ignore the order, it, we're telling the system, remove it from this list. The order's not deleted from CRM, it's just removed from this list of candidates for promotion. Um, so we're saying that that order, we have made a decision never to promote it. Um, I'm going to promote this order, but I could select all the orders I want to promote here. And then over on the right hand side, I, I say process the items and it will promote or ignore all the orders that I've selected. So I'm doing that now. And if we wait just a moment, 
we can see here that order number 45 has been created in Sage um, 50 accounts. So let's go into Sage 50 accounts and look at the sales orders. And there's order number 45 that we just created. And it contains the product I did, the S1 line and the, and the type M message. There's the description I created and, and that's the purchase order reference number there. Um, now that this order is in Sage 50 accounts, it's just like any other order and you can dispatch it and you know, convert it to an invoice in exactly and, and, and do exactly what you would do with it to any other order. Um, if we look back in Sage CRM, at that order. Okay, this is order number 45 in Sage 50 accounts as we saw. Um, here's the order and we have recorded that the order was promoted to Sage 50 accounts on the 15th of January. There. We could have done exactly the same. We could have created a quote and promoted that and it works in a very similar way. One other feature that we've got here um, that I'm, I'm going to show you now is the is what we call the quick quote feature. A quick quote feature allows us to create an order simultaneously in Sage CRM and Sage 50 accounts. Um, and one of the nice features about this is we're looking here at all the orders in Sage 50 accounts. I can, I can display all the orders in a category or I could display in, in all the orders beginning with certain letters. Um, so here for all the orders and we can page, I'm looking at paper products and we can see there's two pages of paper product information. Here, that's the Sage 50 price, real time. And that's the quantity in stock, real time in Sage 50 accounts. So if I chose books 03, I could then say I want to have 10 of those and I would add it to my quote. And then if I chose, um, and that's just put it in there, ready to go on the order. Um, the price is even cheaper than the one above because Sage 50 accounts has applied some discount for whatever reason to that order. Um, I'm going to look at another one here, paper 04. And if I decided to order 22 of them and add it to the quote, it's added it to the quote but it's highlighted a problem in red. And what it's highlighted, is if we look up here, we can see there are only 21 of the product in stock. Um, so I could now choose if I wanted to, to remove that product from the order just by um, doing that there, uh, by clicking on the icon to the left. Um, I'm going to put in a description and then we can promote this order. Um, because we're creating an opportunity as well, we need to put in a, an opportunity percentage. <clears throat> now, 
As we can see on the right, I could promote this as a quote. Um, I could, that is, I could create a quote in Sage CRM and promote it as a quote. I can create an order in Sage CRM and promote this as an order. Or I can promote, create an invoice in Sage CRM, uh, in Sage 50 accounts, sorry. Um, Sage CRM doesn't handle invoices at all, so that if I wanted to create the invoice in Sage 50 accounts, we've, we create a quote in Sage CRM just so that we've got a record of it. Um, I'm going to choose to promote this to an order. And if we wait just a second, a message will appear. There it is. To telling us that we've just created order 46 in Sage 50 accounts. If I was to refresh this, order 46 will appear. And there's the order in Sage 50 accounts. So we've created that order using the Sage 50 discount structure um, and with, with a view on the actual real-time stocks available. <clears throat> that really is the conclusion of the main part of the dem demonstration now. Um, in a nutshell, we can maintain products in one place in CRM. Uh, we can maintain customers and suppliers in CRM and they will be automatically kept in step on Sage 50 accounts. And we can process orders in Sage CRM or quotes, and we can have them synchronized into Sage 50 accounts. I'm going to show you 